Massive changes in corporate approaches to sustainability are needed if the world is to avoid the worst effects of climate change. But, says green business champion John Elkington, those changes can be realised if we can break through the hurdle that he calls the sustainability barrier. At the species level, I think we've been through one or two uh, periods uh, like this, when we broke, broke out of Africa, um, the Industrial Revolution at, a, in a sense, a slightly smaller scale, the, 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 the race to the moon was, was another one. But this is a bit like all of those put uh, together. It looks an immense challenge, almost unspeakably uh, difficult, but I think we'll break through it. In a talk at NUS Business School, Elkington struck a cautionary note on the multiple challenges the world faces. But while he says this is a dangerous period for global capitalism, it also presents opportunities. For sustainability and for climate change, it actually may be the best thing uh, that could possibly have happened. Because once uh, the older models, the older technologies start to be squeezed out of the economy, the opportunity to create uh, new ones is that much uh, greater. The challenge, though, is vast and it is urgent. At current levels of production, the world churns out 768 grams of carbon per dollar of value created. But according to business NGO The Carbon War Room, to stabilise the global climate, that needs to be slashed from 768 grams down to just six. This is a stretch target to end all stretch targets. This is an immense uh, uh, divide between where we currently are and where we need to be. The challenge becomes all the more pressing, with forecasts indicating the world's population is set to more than double, to around 15 billion people by the end of the century. I was spooked enough at 10. When I start to think about 15, I'm about to throw in the towel. But, but it, we have to think about a very different demographic context uh, for, to what everything that we do. And that's where sustainability comes in. Speaking to an audience that included representatives from business and environmental non-profits, Elkington compared the scale of the environmental challenges today to the challenge of breaking the sound barrier faced by Air Force pilots in the 1940s and 50s. Many thought it could not be broken, and many pilots died trying. But some people just chose not to believe that and they just continued uh, uh, pushing and redesigning aircraft. And eventually people like Chuck Yeager uh, broke through. Likewise, at about the same time, another apparent barrier to human capability was challenged and eventually broken. People thought physiologically human beings could not run uh, a mile in f uh, faster than for four minutes. Roger Bannister uh, happened to break through and in the same year, 16 people broke through. It was more a mental barrier that people were uh, struggling with. And I think with the sustainability barrier, we're bumping up against it in all sorts of different ways. The world, he says, is similarly on the cusp of a revolution, this one in sustainability. But at this stage, like the pilots, it finds itself knocking against multiple and seemingly insurmountable crises. So yes, we again have an energy crisis, but in addition we have a food crisis in parts of the world. We have a water crisis developing, uh, if you think about the melting of the glaciers and the Himalayas. We have a climate crisis developing, but what's different is all of these things are now intimately interlinked in ways that wasn't at least visible uh, before. Quoting from his upcoming book, The Zero Noughts, Elkington says it is time for businesses to move beyond the short term, joining some of the pioneering firms that have begun to think and act on a cross-generational timescale. Remember that figure, 768 to 6. What I'm basically saying in the book is that we've got to drive things to zero. Uh, zero carbon, uh, zero toxics, um, uh, zero waste, uh, and, and so on. Concluding his talk, Elkington said sustainability can be embedded in most businesses. But, despite the backslapping talk by many companies, there is still much work to be done. We'll see people misusing the zero language as well. But if they start to adopt it, it enables us to hold them accountable in new ways. With problems outpacing solutions, he urged corporate leaders to embed real, long-term sustainability into their business plans, challenging them to join in the race towards zero. For NUS Business School, I'm Joe Haverley.